Hello and welcome to a new ORF webinar. In today's video, we're going to be discussing the silencing of dissent in Pakistan and how since coming to power in 2018 with the help of the military, there has been an increasing trend by the Imran Khan government towards silencing dissent, criticism, or any opinion or point of view that does not fit the army's narrative for the country. And joining me to discuss this is Ms. Marvi Siremad, a Pakistani political commentator and a human rights activist. Thank you so much for speaking with ORF. I'll, Thank you very much for inviting me. I'll begin with what are the most recent attacks on dissidents, that is the killing of Sajid Hussain, a Baloch journalist in Sweden, and Arif Wazir, a Pashtun nationalist in Wana. What do these two murders, even though they've happened thousands of kilometers apart, tell us about the state of affairs in Pakistan today? Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, actually, these, uh, if, if you uh, look at the kind of uh, 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 reporting that Sajid used to do, uh, you can see um, who was offended by Sajid's reporting, who was offended by the speeches that RF uh, Wazir used to do. Uh, it's not um, it's not rocket science actually. Arif Wazir um, uh, was very much in Pakistan and he was a very vocal leader of Pashtun Tawakul's movement. And for last in uh, if you look at last two years, in last uh, twenty four months, for more than tw around twenty months, he was in uh, one kind of judicial custody or uh, or another. Also, um, and then he used to. Uh, be granted bail, he would be out and then he would be once again uh, arrested. On 17th of April, he was arrested for making a speech that was considered to be uh, the anti-state speech, which was uh, basically against the, uh, the, uh, the, the you know, lack of transparency in the military operations and what kind of, uh, um, you know, human rights violations, uh, according to him, were being uh, uh, committed by the military and security agencies in um, tribal areas, especially the districts that were FATA um, uh, a year ago. Uh, and he was, uh, there, there was a vicious campaign on uh, his speeches and the speeches of other PTM leaders. And then he was arrested and then he was uh, just before, uh, five days before his murder, he was uh, released on bail. And this happens. And then it is pinned on the terrorists. Um, Taliban, um, uh, I have been to Waziristan. Um, there are many journalists who have been taken to Waziristan by the security agencies to, the, we call it war tourism. And uh, we, uh, I can you know, say with full confidence that there is no way that even uh, a bird could fly without the um, you know, without the fear of being killed by the uh, by the security agencies. Um, so, so you, you, there, there is a certain kind of uh, curfew all the time. You know, uh, and everyone knows everyone there. This is a small. Uh, the, the, the population is not very big, and it's not very difficult to uh, to actually control who carries weapons and who does not. And whosoever carries weapons, everyone knows. Uh, so uh, it's uh, it's quite uh, unimaginable that someone would come from Afghanistan and no one from the security agencies know, and they would kill uh, a political actors and known political act actors, and then they they will go back, they'll disappear in thin air. That's that doesn't um, you know uh, quite add up. Uh, looking at how Waziristan is. Um, as far as Sajid uh, is concerned, now Sajid's stories are, you know, someone uh, actually compiled a list of, uh, excellent list of uh, uh, his stories, and all of them were problematic for, uh, for the security establishment and the, um, uh, the establishment that controls civilian part of politics. Uh, so it's not uh, very difficult to see uh, who was not very happy uh, with their, the, you know, uh, with both of them living. Uh, but it's very really difficult to actually say that Pakistani security establishment has actually killed um, Sajid in Sweden or in Waziristan because we do not have, you know, as a journalist, I I have to have some uh, some uh, kind of uh, of an evidence or. Um, 
you know an intelli- and so this this can be an intelligent guess but this cannot be uh you know we can't say it because they have uh, uh their methods have evolved um to, uh, you know uh, with the, with the passage of time so it's it has becoming it is becoming more and more difficult to uh, say with certainty that you know they have done this but um, you know both sajid and arif were um, completely pain in their necks and they are, they have been killed mm-hmm. suppression of dissent is not something which is new in pakistan we saw this in the run up to the election where uh, media organizations were censored journalists were harassed uh, opposition members were targeted and we continue to see it now so why is it that the mainstream media continues to remain silent because it seems pretty much in black and white but yet they remain silent why no, do you think that is yeah this is uh, no very good question uh actually bef- uh, this uh, crushing of dissent is uh, very old not just just this elections yeah. it has been you know going on for quite a while for example i'll tell you in 2000 it was uh, you know i don't know i just i've lost the count uh, when i was and my husband were attacked by you know we were um, we were shot at in 2012 before that 2010 we our house was barged in for the first time and after that they barged in our in our house so many times but it was in 2010 when they i was arrested in 2007 uh, so i i don't think the scent we have been ever since i born i have seen this crushing of dissent around me uh, but uh, the the uh, you know uh, the way it is being uh, conducted right now it's so brazen and shameless they are not even now uh, ashamed of being called on i mean they're they're just doing it and uh, they know that um, uh, you know other than you know talking with orf or talking with new york times or writing in washington post we can't do anything much about it and uh, that that's why i mean they 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 do it with impunity um in the elections it happened uh, you know uh, it, this was the first election when it happened so widely and so brazenly that and then uh, uh, and this was being done in broad daylight and social media activists on social media were continually talking about it and nothing was being being done you know the state was because state uh, you know most powerful elements of the state were committing it so that is why state was not able to respond to it and uh, the only thing uh, that, that was happening was uh, chatter on the social media nothing much no um, uh, court was uh, uh, taking so motto uh, notices or anything nothing was happening on that and that actually emboldened uh, these elements within the state and now we see that uh, and not with the uh, may i remind you that it it didn't start with the with the 2018 election it started in 2014 when pakistan's biggest media uh, outlet the jung uh, group uh, that um, uh, owns jio um, uh, tv channel jio network they were taken on by the security establishment in a way that was unprecedented i mean their distribution was blocked beat newspapers they have bunch of newspapers in their bunch of uh, channels entertainment channels and uh, current affairs channels they were all uh, you know uh, suspended uh, for uh, you know very lengths of time um, uh, courts could not do it and they did it with a um, Uh, you know with the sense of that um, uh, plausibility kind of uh, uh, you know pl- uh, plausible deniability i mean they uh, did not use um, the machinery uh, which is there under the law to regulate media which is pemra pakistan electronic media regulatory authority uh, they did not use it uh, many times they used it but um, uh, majority of times they did not use it what they did was in pakistan if you know there is a uh, direct to home and dish antennas are not allowed uh, so people are uh, consumer is actually dependent on the cable operators and there's a huge operation of cable operators and most of these cable operators have filed a story in 2018 probably yeah 
uh, for daily times uh, in which I did a little research. Who are these cable operators? So most of them are retired army officers or the people who are, uh, you know, under the control of, uh, of, the, uh, of the security establishment. So security establishment just will just have to make a phone call or a text message. Now this has to be done and they do it. They just cable operators would just cut off the, uh, the distribution of uh, these uh, uh, of certain channels uh, or what they what they would do is that they will change their position on um, you know on the um, uh, the serials uh, so what will happen at uh, a, a channel which was uh, so there is the news channels which are from channel number one to channel number say 20 according to the their viewership uh, and geo had a you know the widest possible viewership uh, after the state run PTV channel, but, um, and their number would be among first five channels. So they, that they would be pushed to, for example, 100 on 200 numbers so that people are not able to find them. Uh, and, uh, this is, so this is how, this is the anatomy of control. Uh, when this happens, then advertiser does not, uh, you know, you, you are not the priority of any advertiser that, that way your business is, impacted your business is negatively affected plus uh, there is this uh, thing with the uh, few journalists in particular uh, channel or a newspaper because of these journalists adamant on uh, uh, you know on, on reporting the facts that they see uh, or adamant on uh, raising uh, critical issues against the security establishment or against the political party that is the protege of the security establishment so uh, and and so these are the red lines now now when someone some journalist crosses these red lines there are so many different ways to deal with it what sajid uh, hussein in sweden um, uh, I mean, it was the it was the extreme case, uh, but in Pakistan they they no more do, they don't have to do it. I mean they don't have they all they have to do it. Maybe they will call the uh, the owner of the, of your newspaper or owner of your channel, and uh, uh, they will fire you. Or uh, and then if one outlet fires you, no one else takes you. So you are strangulated your family suffers you suffer and then people just see and people just decide oh who wants this just yeah. to file a couple of stories let's not let's just you know go with the rut and then uh, there is there are other ways also um, people who do not who are you know well off or they might not uh, live on on just the salaries of these uh, channels or newspapers they are um, uh, threatened they are um, they are threatened for the lives of their children. Um, you know, um, some, sometimes you receive a call and they would say that, uh, oh, we know your daughter uh, leaves the school at this time. And how is your daughter who is studying in blah, blah school, so-and-so school and so-and-so tuition center, etc. Uh, so it, it, it is enough to actually freeze you. Actually, uh, you, you, you won't want to do anything about it. So... Uh, uh, these are different ways in which they try to uh, to impose their will, and most of the time they are successful. Um, so, if you now look at the makeup of Pakistani media, uh, one thing is important that, that so many um, TV uh, TV show anchors and senior journalists from the print media they now they are running their own YouTube channels. They think that it uh, they can say things which their uh, you know their mainstream media organizations would not allow them to say. But even in those TV uh, you YouTube TV uh, channels, you would see that um, there's a certain kind of uh, narrative that is being built. So I feel that these privately run YouTube channels, they are also created to um, propagate and perpetuate the state propaganda. Whatever those security establishment elements want you to propagate, you say it. Sometimes it may be um, in, uh, in, uh, you know, in criticism of the incumbent government, which is the protege of security agencies, that would actually earn you the repute of, oh, this journalist is very balanced, you know? So uh, 
you know what I mean? I mean, this is how they are actually trying to manage and manipulate dissent as well. Uh, on the issues of, for example, what should uh, Pakistan's uh, policy towards India, towards USA, towards Taliban, towards Afghanistan, um, or towards China, these elements are very, very strongly uh, mani- um, monitored and manipulated. And no one can, even these private um, uh, YouTube channel owners, these reporters, these senior journalists, they will, you will not see them utter a single word that is not in line with the state narrative. And that is because of this fact that they know even if they do it on their YouTube channel, they will have to face the consequences. So uh, right now, people, the ordinary people in Pakistan do not believe anything that is said on Pakistani media, mm-hmm. uh, whether print media or um, electronic media or even these uh, YouTube channels. Uh, these are just, um, you know, many of these channels are by the junior reporters as well, who uh, want to claim their share in the media market and who want to get noticed by the st- security establishment and the incumbent government mm-hmm. so that they are, uh, and they are successful because just a few, uh, couple of weeks ago, Prime Minister actually convened a meeting with the YouTube channel owners. And these were the, uh, those who were actually propagating uh, government's narrative and security establishment's narrative. It's interesting that you bring up uh, YouTube and how this is happening because we see this a lot on Twitter. For example, immediately after Arif Wazir's murders, the Twitter trolls sort of went into over, overdrive to discredit him, uh, first accusing him of treason, then saying he was working yeah. with Afghan intelligence, then saying, no, it is Afghan intelligence who actually killed him. We see this on TV debate panels where you always have one army loyalist or lackey who is positioned to sort of propagate the army's narrative. So how organized do you think this is across all social media and what sort of impact does that have in propagating the military's narrative? You know, that's a hugely important uh, way they are doing it because I don't think these uh, um, uh, Twitter trolls are organic. They are, um, uh, a while ago, there was this uh, excellent report by Pakistani journalist Rimsha Jahangir in Dawn. Uh, You must have seen it. This was about the, how the control is, uh, uh, how the narrative is controlled and the media is controlled, what is the mechanism. And most of it, uh, she actually focused on social media and especially on Twitter. And uh, um, according to her research, there these are just a uh, few people, like maybe two dozen, not more than that. But they are having, they are controlling multiple accounts and they are very carefully retweeting. So they have calibrated this uh, data, uh, uh, you, you know, analytics of uh, of Twitters and Twitter and um, other social media um, uh, outlets, YouTube and Facebook, etc. And they, uh, it seems that they are being uh, controlled by one or few, uh, you know, entity. Uh, I interviewed one of the missing bloggers that uh, went missing in 2018, and they uh, were released later after uh, uh, after uh, a lot of uh, um, torture on them, and they were released, and uh, all of them are able to sneak out of Pakistan, and now they are living in different Western countries. One of them I interviewed, and he told me that uh, uh, if you look at uh, these uh, trolls, they will be uh, doing not only the bidding of the PTI, which is the incumbent political party uh, in, in the government right now, uh, and it, it overlaps between the military establishment and PTI. And within PTI, certain elements. So our analysis is that within PTI, there is because there is a, this party is not an organic political party. It's just a, a bunch of uh, opportunists who have been, uh, you know, who up kehte Hindi mein kehte na Bhanmati ka kun kahan ki int kahan ka roda Bhanmati ka kunba joda. So this is the Bhanmati ka kunba jo idhar se udhar se ikatha karke. So they don't have a. So all of them are in a race of uh, getting more and more share out of the you know pie, and. Uh, this is why there are uh, different kinds of internal struggles within PTI. So the the people who are closest to the military establishment, they have the um, strongest uh, influence within the party. And these people 
are, um, you know, uh, are also, they're notorious for one person, for example, Jahangir Tadeem. Um, he is notorious for managing a social media team that actually trolls others, um, not only um, the dissenters, but also from his um, rival elements within his own party. Uh, and military establishment actually, um, you know, maybe, I mean, I don't have an evidence, but it seems that they they hire the trolls, the troll groups from. So there's, there's this troll farming has acquired a very advanced science, not only in Pakistan, but especially in Pakistan. Um, and this, these troll farms are created and then they are rented out and then they are hired and then they are, you know, they are available for multiple use. And especially because the, uh, the party that is in government and the military establishment, security establishment, they uh, have the most resources at their disposal. So they are the ones who actually rule uh, through these, uh, these Twitter trolls. Um, I, I must also mention that uh, when I say security establishment, I do not only mean military. And military is the, at the leading position, but it cannot happen without uh, the, the security establishment uh, would mean um, all those think tankers also who are, um, you know, um, uh, bidding for the security establishment and uh, those maybe uh, influential civil bureaucrats and politicians. So these, and they are, we call it security elite. They all constitute the security establishment. Then they are, um, you know, they are not only, so the politicians, some politicians, they're not only protege of the, of the military establishment, they are very much part of the security establishment. And they are the ones who gain most, gain the most. And uh, the, 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 the deep state actually makes it sure that they gain the most. And uh, this is how it happens. What is, how do you view the Pashtun Tafu's movement from its inception to now? How do you view its development over time and where the movement is heading? Well, the movement is the, I know there is a huge uh, popularity of the movement among the, especially among the Pashtun youth. You know, it's not that Pashtun youth is not alone. There are many, many people from other, uh, 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 especially the activists from Punjab, from Balochistan, from Sindh. Um, they are the Mohajir uh, uh, activists, the Saraiki activists. They are with Pashtun Tawakos movement. I myself am a Punjabi speaking Sindhi. You know, my uh, mother is from Sindh and my father is from Saraiki uh, belt. So uh, I'm a mix of all those dissenting communities, uh, but I'm uh, standing with the Pashtun Tahafuz movement. Um, uh, we have, we have, and we have committed ourselves to the cause of uh, these activist groups, especially the Pashtun Tahafuz movement. So, the, and there is the ever growing popularity among the um, masses, among the youngsters, especially uh, who do not, uh, I mean, who are, who are rejecting the, um, the uh, established order of the political parties, uh, uh, in especially in Khyber Pakhtunkhwa, uh, where even the nationalist parties uh, have uh, actually stumbled uh, their their stance uh, on the issues that PTM is um, raising, has been quite questionable. I mean, in the past they have been flinching, um, and uh, also uh, in in support of PTM. Also, I mean, they there have been instances when the Pashtun Nationalist Party (ANP) Awami National Party was uh, afraid of um, of supporting PTM, and they actually ousted their uh, central leaders who supported, who openly supported PTM, and they still stand, um, you know, marginalized uh, and pushed to walls. Uh, but they are not, they are, you know, standing their grounds and they are not, uh, uh, I mean, uh, they're still supporting PTM. Uh, so in, in terms of the masses, I think PTM has been, is a huge success. Uh, it has been able to communicate what it wants, what it stands for. And despite speaking openly and very boldly against the state policies in, especially in Khyber Pakhtunkhwa and the Fata areas, the erstwhile Fata, the tribal areas that adjoin the Afghanistan's border, uh, Pakistan border, uh, they, uh, they have been uh, very brave in rejecting those policies. Uh, without 
resorting to violence. They are not violent people. They believe in the peaceful resistance, and that is their power. I think this uh, this is where, and they are not separatist. I mean, it is very easy to uh, to reject Baloch youngsters who raise who uh, who rise for their own rights. It's very easy to reject them for uh, being separatist. No one actually likes separatists. Um, even in um, I'm, I'm in USA right now, and I when I whenever I go to different events think think tank uh, organized events and seminars i feel there is a certain uh, contempt for the separatists not only for below separate i mean separatists in general um, uh, people uh, in general um, in the under the liberal democracy they do not like um, uh, like other people to exercise their right to secession um, but, then what but is about um, the ptm given that they have such straightforward demands um, and rational demands. What is it about them that terrifies the military and the army so much? Yeah, this is important. See, uh, if these demands are met in letter and spirit, there won't be any, I mean, security establishment would not be exercising any control over, uh, over these areas. There would be transparency in military operations. There would be, and if there is transparency, uh, so many things will get, I mean, so many Pandora boxes will be opened. Uh, there will be accountability uh, at every level. There will be accountability for those activists who have been killed uh, in custody, uh, who went missing and no in, uh, state institution is ready to actually accept that they were, uh, they, they were ever arrested. There, there will be accountability for those who were, uh, who were, you know, whose mutilated dead bodies were found uh, in the streets of uh, of Balochistan or other areas? Uh, th there would be accountability for thousands and millions of uh, uh, dollars they that um, just were engulfed during the war on terror. Um, so that there will be accountability, it would be fierce, it would be across the board, and there would be no control. I mean, there would be very little control over that. So I think this is this is why it is uh, important for the security establishment to ensure that whatever PTM is asking for is not granted. It really is a sorry state of affairs, especially in a country that's had such a sort of precarious balance between civil and military institutions. But thank you so much for your frankness and your candor. Uh, it's very much appreciated. We hope to have more such discussions in the future. Thank you so much for speaking with ORF. Thank you very much for inviting me.